Hey guys, this is John. It is another clock as a weapon video. I'm playing I am Chick Monk now, 2692. Fresh session today. I've had a couple of really good sessions recently. Two five out of fives. But every session starts anew. And I'm trying to think about all of my games, all of my results in chess as independent of one another. You know, even though naturally you're gonna feel the momentum of wins and the crushing feeling of losses, especially losses in in strings, losses in a row. But I think it's a healthy mentality to try to separate them in your head as much as possible. Okay, let's play knight d2. I kind of like this version of the white side of the banco. I've played this a couple times. There's quite a bit of theory in this line, actually, but it's pretty easy to play for white. So usually you retreat the bishop, you try to play for f4. Uh, let's go here. Black's not yet threatening to play b5. Okay, f5. I think f4 followed by e4 makes sense. I could also play queen c2 first. I think I like queen c2. This is usually a constructive move. But yeah, trying to get these moves in. Okay, now I could play... I could play a5, but... I think I'm just going to go ahead with this main plan. Kick the knight back and play e4. Let's see if I can play in the center. So black may achieve b5 with this plan, and I do bury my bishop for the time being, but I like the central activity I'm going to get here, I hope. But yeah, kind of an interesting question. Black goes for b5 right away. Let's take. Takes with the knight. Mm hmm. Let's take that. Now, probably moving the light square bishop is justified. Maybe bishop f3. So, try to x-ray the queen here. It is a gorgeous day today. I got some sun outside a little bit. Uh, let's take. I'm playing with the window open as well, right in front of me here. I'm liking the green board theme. I don't know about you guys, but maybe because it's spring. Who knows? Okay, queen, a, queen d8. We could have rook a7, uh, g4 maybe. I'm going to start with king h1 though. I feel like this is just a helpful move. Stop bishop d4 with check. Don't exactly see how to proceed. So let's just, again, try to play constructive chess. Uh, let's take with the rook. Feels like this trade should benefit me. But a long ways to go here. Maybe g5, bishop g4, try to work this in somehow. Let's play king g2, just guard this. Yeah, now g5 is even more so on my radar, because bishop g3 would trap the queen if I get those two moves in. Maybe maybe black will play g5? That would be interesting. Albeit probably bad. Yeah, I really like the look of this, because if uh, takes, queen takes, black can't play rook e8. I think black has some questions on their hand, on their hands. Uh, bishop g3. Maybe so much so that I wouldn't be surprised to see takes, but then... Yeah, I don't feel like black should get enough compensation. Takes. I probably do have to take it because black would be threatening queen takes h3, so... Okay, takes. Hmm. Just rook b1 now. Or even, yeah, okay, let's go rook b1. And bombs away. Okay. Let's take that. Let's hide the king. Yeah, feels winning, but... Gotta stamp out black's activity here. Probably bishop e5 is what black should do. And try to trade. Counterintuitive, but I think otherwise... D6 is going to be hanging. The bishop's hanging. Okay. I could play queen e6 here. Tempting move. Could also keep pieces on board. Uh, let's play... I'm going to play a move to keep the tension. Kind of a sneaky move. Looking for rook f1. Queen e6 is just a way to try to get pieces off the board. But I think given the time difference, it's better to play more aggressively. Put black under pressure here. Queen e6 coming. Queen e6 check. K 
Okay, bishop takes d6. There's no useful checks that black has, so I think this is good. This is not a threat, I suppose, but just picking out that pawn is pretty darn helpful. All right, and we get a win. Yeah, so that's a line that I would recommend if you're looking for a decent weapon against the Benoni. It's a little bit different than most Benoni lines from the white side because they're putting the pawn on e3 rather than e4. I've also recommended just the uh, e4, bishop d3, h3, knight f3 approach like in my d4 repertoire on Chessable, but I also find this line to be pretty intuitive for white. Eventually going for the breakthrough in the center. Okay. So we pick up that first game against a strong opponent. Let's get back in there. Hope you guys are all having a good weekend. 124 chess. I usually like to play this way against the kingside fianchetto. Nothing fancy. Okay, let's play bishop g4. Retreat the bishop. Uh, okay, let's play e5 so long as white's offering to let me do that. Good knight f6. Okay, interesting. Interesting setup from white. Flexible. Little hippo action going on here, like reversed hippo, extended hippo with this. Uh, let's play bishop a3. White could take and then play g5. That would be interesting. Because my knight would have to go back to, okay, different approach here from white. I'm thinking about h5 here. That does invite g5, though. Uh, you know what? Let's just castle queenside. I've castled queenside before in these situations, and my king feels generally pretty safe. Now I do like the look of g5, or uh, h5, rather. And I'm going to reposition this knight here, I think. Try to get it pointed towards the center. F4 may come eventually, but I'm not worried about it right now. I feel like my knight stands pretty well on d6. Flexibility on both wings. Okay. Hmm. E4 looks premature. Uh, knight B5, something I could do. Knight B5 kind of invites F4, though, but actually I think I like that. I'm going to trade queens. It might have been nice to keep the queens on the board. and Okay, he's going to do this, allowing this, but I guess he's just going to argue that F5 is coming. Fair. Oh, but this actually just traps the rook. Yeah, his rook doesn't have anywhere to go. Okay, so let's save this for now. H5 is hanging, but feels pretty good. Okay, I don't have to take the rook right away. That's important. G6 probably runs into F6. I'm not sure I like that. Um, hmm, maybe take... Now, taking is interesting. Take and then g6. Kind of like this approach. Simplify. Hmm. Okay, let's take here. He'll play knight f6. So I'm still going to get the exchange. Spent a little bit too long on that. Um, on the whole, though, it looks good. Okay, let's let's take now. Let's go over here. I'm going to let him take here. See if I can get some play for that. Okay, let's push. Oh, he can take here. Uh, but then I have rook takes h4, I guess. Still, let's bring up the king just to rule that out in the future. Start advancing on this wing. Oh, man. Didn't even notice that was possible. Nah, now I'm just down a knight. Ooh, yeah. Blundered 95 check. All right, still try to make something happen here, but not looking great. Yeah, that's pretty much over. Okay. Yeah, won the exchange, but wasn't a great position to win the exchange because it was it remained pretty closed. Yeah, flat out missed 95. Which I guess was there even on the move prior, right? Yeah, c5 was simply a blunder. 
White could have immediately played knight e5 check. All right, my winning streak is gone, but that's all right. Otherwise, I think I played okay. Would have been nice to keep queens on the board, I feel. Even though this seemed to work out okay for me materially, I just don't like the momentum in the position. It seems like White has the initiative. I do think this was a reasonable solution, because otherwise it feels like my bishop is going to be buried on h7. Yeah, one mistake made all the difference. Probably that c5 move. All right, same opponent, chance at revenge. Let's play knight f3 on move one. Sometimes I like to play this, just flexible. All right, let's go for a Fianchetto. Good, fast opponent here. FM, but I feel they play pretty strong. I can tell. You know, FM's already strong, but... Yeah, good player here. Okay, it's Fianchetto. Mm -hmm. Some interesting pawn action going on. Let's play e3 to start. Just fortify the center. I'm pro Ooh, Okay, g5. I was not expecting that, but I'm going to go here. I have a feeling they're going to try to sink their knight in here. Yeah, but let's take. And let's jump to the center. Maybe f4. f4 seems like an intriguing idea. Prop up that knight. Just try to weaken Black's king side a little bit. Definitely like my knight on e5. Hard to push away for white. White may or black may try to exchange it. I'm playing white here. <laughs> okay, yeah, he does. Uh, knight f3. Knight f3. Maybe if f6, I can come back here with the knight. Or even knight g6. Let's take again. Keep glancing over here. I changed up my uh, screen recording a little bit, so I'm just paranoid that it's not recording, but I think we're all good. Ooh, bishop takes. Okay, interesting. I feel it's better to take this way. Keep the tension. This is a bit exposed now, but my bishop can always come to d4. Oh, I feel like black should have trouble with this king. Queen h5. Queen h5 almost dying to be played here, although that runs into knight c2 perhaps. Oh, I think I got to be okay with sacrificing uh, an exchange here if necessary. Okay, f5, f5, followed by if he takes e6 check. Man, that looks dangerous for him. Let's do it. I cannot resist. <laughs> wow. f6, I play rook takes f5 or something similar. Even h4 is interesting here. Nah, let's stick with rook takes f5. Bishop takes here, I wonder if I can take. And then quickly play uh, rook f1 after that. That looks strong. I don't see an objection to that, so I'm going to do it. He has to take. It should be... Ooh, he takes with the queen. Okay. Yeah, he's just going the practical route, trying to create some play. Makes sense. Okay, let's go rook c1. Looking for this. Okay, I'll give a check. Hmm. Okay, let's bring the queen all the way back to d1. So I feel like I'm in a technically winning position, but there's a lot of play left. The queen against the knight and the rook is what this boils down to, because pawns are equal. We both have a light square bishop. Let's play h4. This is not a threat. I always have queen d4 if necessary. I'm going to hold that in reserve for now. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a check. I'm going to try to keep this pawn here. Maybe take with the queen. Okay, let's check. Centralize. Go here. Queen's pretty annoying, so now queen b8 could be a threat in the future. Mm. 
He might check here, but I'm just going to repeat once. Okay, let's go queen in. I'm going to sack this pawn. Oh, actually, it's still defended. Okay, it's defended from a distance, but I'm spending a little too long on that. Okay, let's take. If he takes g3, I have check on b8. That's nice. Um, let's go here. takes I have king f2 should be fine okay now it definitely feels like I should be pretty easily winning if I whoops I don't click on the side panel <laughs> Ooh, this is a nice move I think double attack I uh, didn't see that but okay let's push push again and we'll get the skewer okay pin the rook Pin rather than skewer, I should say. Okay. Yeah, kept the queen active. Tried to maneuver it around, create threats. Time management was okay. I think I spent a little bit too long after I won his queen. I think I could speed up eh, right around this phase of the game. 110 versus 140. Yeah, I hemmed and hawed a little bit. Like these decisions, king h2. I should just play queen c7 here right away. Repeated the position. Black's happy to repeat because... You know, he's much worse, and he's up ahead on the clock a little bit. But I think I found a good solution. The mobili mobility of the queen and the ability to uh, target multiple pieces, like with queen d2, even though that didn't strictly win material because of knight e6. Uh, yeah, and these pawns advancing, it's too much. All right. Two more games. Let's do it. Jaqen Hukar. All right, let's play a Scandi. Queen a5. Been playing quite a bit of Queen a5 lately. I do think this is in some theoretical trouble, but I have not yet met an opponent who's uh, really punished that. <laughs> so I'm going to keep the refutation to myself. I don't think there is a refutation, actually, but there's some lines that put it in question, let's say. Okay, this I think is good for black. White has to be very careful here because not only am I hitting this twice, there's also threats on f2. Uh, okay, I've had this in a game before. I think it's bishop c5 is the move. And on knight d1, you can actually play this pretty bizarre looking bishop takes c2. Yeah, I've had this in a game. It looks weird, but if white takes either piece, the rook on e1 is hanging. I had this in an OTB game against a 2100 in like 2007. Okay, queen d8 I think is the move here. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I'm hitting the bishop, so if takes here, I can take the bishop on d2. Okay, take. And if rook e2, there's bishop takes d1, which is a really nice idea. Pinning the rook to the white queen. Hmm. This feels like I can maybe take here. I can also just castle, castle. Oh, I also, I can play queen takes e1 mate, guys. Oh, that's not mate. Okay, there's bishop f1. <laughs> okay, that was funny. The game continues, but all right, he resigned. Uh, yeah, I probably would have castled here to safety. Yeah, it took me a second to realize queen takes e1 was possible. Maybe I got to watch chess fundamentals number one, undefended pieces, but... Also, I had a moment of panic when chess.com did not register the checkmate here. Like, what What did I miss? Is my queen hanging? <laughs> no, but bishop up one. Yeah, I think after castles, black should be easily, easily winning here. Knight's pinned. If the knight moves, uh, I have queen takes f2. Or if the knight goes to e3, I can take the rook on a1. So, yeah, some tactical tricks here. Also, for example, if white plays bishop f4, I believe can't remember if it's knight takes f2 or queen c5. I think it's knight takes f2 right away is what you want to play with the idea. King takes f2, queen c5 check, fork on the king and the bishop. So just a little queen a5 theory for you. I've also had a few games where white takes with the rook, and then you play queen c7 with the threat of knight g4. 
Okay, three for four. Last game of the session, let's do this. Oh, this guy uh, was cussing me out in the chat. He tried to bypass the uh, vulgar language filter. I gotta give him a down mark. You can you can give people a thumbs up or a thumbs down on chess.com now as like kind of the uber score of chess.com. <laughs> so I just gave him a, thumb, a thumbs down. Okay, playing W, Buffalo. Another Scandi. Um, let's play f5. I'm going to try to take the center space here. This is kind of an ambitious way to play this, but white is not exactly dominating the center. So I think this is justified. Let's play bishop c5. Mm, let's put a stop to b4 attempts. Now maybe just castle. I'm a little bit exposed here, but I don't see how white's going to take advantage. Okay, that move is interesting. I feel like that should just lose a pawn. No, not lose a pawn, but... Definitely doesn't win material for white. Uh, D4, I can take, take, take. I think that would probably be fine. He may check on C4 after this, but I like my bishop in the center. Looks pretty good. Oh, no, I did win a pawn. Yes. I've been having trouble counting pawns lately. I'm always off by one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I did win a pawn because I got two pawns and white only got one from the beginning. Okay, here I can use this trick that I just mentioned. Take, and if king takes, check and pick up the bishop. Doesn't seem to be any complicating factors there, so let's go for it. And if white doesn't take the bishop, I just win the rook. Uh, there's also knight g4, but no, let's not let's not get too fancy here. Just check. On king f1, I'm, I might throw in knight g4. Threatens mate. Also, maybe knight takes h2. Ooh. Okay, here's where, I mean, I could just take the bishop, but I feel like knight g4 is a pretty good opportunity. Maybe there's queen c2. Queen c2 kind of complicates things. Hmm, that seems so correct to do this, though. I'm gonna take and drive the king out. I have so many checks and stuff. Nah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take. Let's not mess with it. f4, perhaps. Okay, so I'm down a minute on the clock, but I'm up two pawns. I have a very good position. Should just be a winning position. Those are the sort of positions that in the past have cost me a lot of points, though. Spending too much time there. Okay. Let's just develop. I think he's trying to bring the knight to f2, like if I check. So I'm just going to develop. And it looks like I'll be able to attack the queen again. So, like, if queen d2, uh, knight e4, for instance, looks good here. Knight e4. Yeah, funnily enough, this is almost trapping the white queen in the middle of the board. All these squares are taken away from the queen. <laughs> Actually, is the queen trapped? Even d7 is covered by the bishop. I mean, white can sacrifice the exchange. Wow. Yeah, white has to sack the exchange. That's pretty funny. Okay, now let's just retreat and guard the bishop. Queen e2 is also good there. Uh, okay. I think... I think he's going to put the bishop on d2. So let's do this. Go attack this bishop. Um... I'm going to go here. Allowing him to take one of these pawns, but I don't think that should be good for him. Although if he takes here, my bishop is under fire, I should be aware. Okay. Um, takes, there's bishop c3. All right, let's do this. Hmm. Need to play faster here. This is not acceptable. Probably get the rooks doubled up on the E file next. Let's go here. Let's take this way. 
Bishop c3, rook d5. Should be pretty annoying for him. The bishop coming into c2, rook d1 in the future. Yeah, this should be winning. I think I can play this right away. If he takes, I take, and then I'm going to be freeing my position up. Mm. Let's give it a check. Hard for white to move here. Just take that. Centralize. Mm -hmm. Okay, that should be simple enough. And we can pre-move this out. No chance of a stalemate with those queenside pawns. Okay, not a perfect game. I don't think my technique was uh, completely accurate. For example, I should have played queen e2 right away after knight f2. Queen e2 was a much better move. Try to force a queen trade or force white to take here. Because then after queen c3, I can play this and stop white from developing bishop d2. So, All right, but I finished with 4 out of 5. Another good session, 80%. Yeah, some nice tactical ideas here. So knight takes e5, looking for the center fork trick just didn't work for white because I'm getting two pawns. And white only won one pawn with knight takes e5 to begin with. And we both win back a piece. Yeah, and bishop takes f2, good idea. Very interesting that we saw that twice in a row, uh, where I was demonstrating that idea in two games in a row. Yeah, so th this position is critical, I think. So in a tournament game... I would definitely spend more time here because knight g4 is, is screaming to be played. Knight g4 threatens mate, also threatens knight takes h2. But I wasn't sure about queen c2 defending the mate threat because that also defends the bishop. I mean, my instincts tell me black has a ton of compensation here and may just be winning with some sort of sequence like f4, let's say. Attack the knight, open up bishop g4 check. But do I want to do this versus just playing like I did in the game where I go up two pawns and... I, I should I should be winning with reasonable play. So how much time did I spend on that decision? It's a little bit too long. These are the things I'm trying to be aware of in the clock as a weapon series in particular, but just overall in general in my game. Okay, not as bad as I thought, 22 and a half seconds. I thought I spent a little bit longer than I actually did, so I thought I spent something like 30 seconds maybe. That's not, I can live with that. Okay, so entertaining session, I think. Some really interesting games, strong opponents. I'm glad I got to play that FM, that nearly 2,700 rated FM twice. Strong opponent right there. Uh, again, hope you guys are having a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if you have any feedback on this video or anything I've been posting recently, what you'd like to see more of or in addition to going forward. And I'll see you guys again soon with another video. Bye, guys.